guys, your boy, your boy here, and today I am going to be doing a review for the FIA World Endurance Championship at Spa Francorchamps, the second round of the championship, which happened last week, of course. So I'm going to be reviewing it, covering it all. This is going to be my first FIA World Endurance Championship. And as a big announcement, I'm actually going to make this into uh, a regular thing, to be honest. So that's pretty cool. So not only are you going to get MotoGP, Formula One, um, Formula E, IndyCar, you're also going to get FIA World Endurance Championship alongside that as well. So be happy for that. And yeah, so that's about it. So without uh, further ado, enough jibber jabbing. Let's go. So we'll start off in qualifying, of course. I'm not going to talk anything about the practice session because one, nothing happens in it, and two, it doesn't really relate to anything. I mean, it only relates to the race, of course, and that kind of stuff like that. So nothing pretty much so yeah let's swiftly move on to the to qualifying and we'll start off with the gte um qualifying of course because in uh the fi one jewish championship if you're not aware um there are two qualifying sessions like pretty much like motor gp that comes to look at uh one group is the gts of course the gte and gte pro and then lmp is like lmp2 lmp1 qualifying pretty much so um, yeah, that's a little heads up on, you know, how it works and that. And in the GTE qualifying, um, there was not much really going on. There was no incidents, no accidents, that kind of stuff. So pretty much in the end, it was the 98 Aston Martin of uh, Pedro Lamy taking the GTE AM pole position. A fantastic uh, lap, of course, you know, really hooked it up all throughout. So, um, yeah. Good result. And then in GTE Pro, it was Sam Bird and James Collado in the Ferrari A, of course, the number 71, who came away and took GTE Pro pole position. Um, a fantastic lap. And um, yeah, hooked it up throughout, you know, particularly through the bus stop section. So um, yeah, a really good job. Um, also, big congrats to both of them as well, because that's their first pole position together in the uh, World Endurance Championship in uh, GT. So that's quite um, good and quite awesome for them to do that, of course. And then moving swiftly on into LMP qualifying. Um, it was quite interesting, to be honest, but uh, before all the interest all got underway, um, there was an accident for the uh, Mana car um, of Vitaly Petrov. Oop, Vitaly Petrov, Formula One. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he crashed out um, quite heavily going into the uh, exit of No Name, actually, and uh, crashed into the wall. Uh, very unfortunate, to be honest, you know. Um, I think he was uh, setting a really good lap time uh, currently on his lap, so, um, yeah, that was quite unfortunate, to be honest, and, um, yeah, but thankfully they did get the car, you know, repaired and all for the race, of course, so not too bad. So then after that happened, we would then have a five-minute wait uh, because of that red flag, of course, and then the session would get back underway, but at that time, some you know teams and all would have less tyres and less time to get the laps all sorted. So you know it was a race against time and getting that perfect lap at the right time, pretty much. And then by the end of it, firstly for LMP2, it would be the G Drive that would take pole position over the Alpines, of course. A big battle in LMP2, of course, between the Jackie Tran DC cars, uh, the Rebellions the G drives and then the Alpines of course so in the end it would be the G drives of course uh, fantastic lap by them of course overhauling the Alpines of course so yeah not bad but then last but certainly not least was the LMP ones of course and just before I start this off whatever just a thing, thing to clear it up of course um, the Toyotas they actually ran three cars compared to last map where they ran two reason being was because one of them the number nine had, was running a Le Mans setup that they were going to use for Le Mans, obviously. So, you know, some sometimes you know in Le Mans or like pre Le Mans races, you'll get teams that actually run Le Mans setups so that it can be all ready and prepped for Le Mans, of course. Whether it be an additional car or maybe two car, maybe one of the two cars, maybe getting it or something like that. Something like that you know, so um, quite weirdly, in you know, Porsche didn't use it. Surprisingly, I was, I was hugely surprised, you know, you would think Porsche would do the same thing as Toyota, run a third car and then put their little Le Mans setup on, but clearly we'll have to see what their little Le Mans setup is and hopefully if it pays off we'll have to see, to be honest. So like I said, clearing from that, we had the number 9 car with the Le Mans setup, it actually went fast in the first sector, but unfortunately 
due to the uh, second sector, of course, it lost a lot of time, so that meant that it, it wouldn't be in contention for pole position, but still a good effort nonetheless. And as the session ended, it was the number one Porsche who would take pole position, Nick Tandy, Mark Kaleeb and Andre Lotter are taking pole position for the six hours of Spa. Great effort by them to overhaul the um, the much um, the much anticipated Toyotas with their three cars, of course. So at the start of the race, it was a good start from the Porsche number one. But as we got into turn one, the number nine sort of did a banzai lock up the brakes down to the source, almost got T-boned by the number one Porsche and just went straight on and lost a bunch of positions. It was so crazy, man. You know, it was almost near disaster between the number one and the number nine, of course. Let's talk about GTE Pro, because that was really the main highlight of the whole race. You know, cut, you know, the AM, um, the P2, the P1 bullshit. The, P, the pros were really taking centre stage of that race, of course. Firstly, it was the um, two fours, which did a bit of NASCAR bump drafting down Kemmel Strait, which is actually insane. Um, the I think the number 67 almost ran almost into the diffuser of the 66 Ford GT, and as a result, as they were doing that sort of bump drafting NASCAR thing, the Ferrari just came out of nowhere, literally came out of nowhere on the outside, and just passed both of the fours to take second place, which would then become. AF Corsa 1 2, so that was uh, pretty cool indeed. And then, of course, we had that insane side by side moment going over Rouge. I was like literally cleansing myself as they were coming up over Rouge side by side like that. The Ford going around the outside, it was crazy, man. You know, the Ford, thankfully, he backed off because I think if they didn't, literally, it would be an almighty crash, to be honest. But it was still good, though, you know. None of them leaving anything to uh, chance, none of them wanting to back off whatever, but like I said, in the end it was the Ford. But it was, it was, it, but honestly, it was so good, literally. It was like up there in terms of like Mark Webber, Alonso, or even Schumacher Reichen in there, so that was pretty cool indeed. And then we had that battle with the Air Corsa Ferraris, which, you know, when I looked at it, I was like, oh my Jesus, this is... This is something, you know, they were wheel banging, they were pushing each other up the road, it was crazy, man. You know, if I was the Air Corsa team manager, I would literally, you know, be off my boil. I'd be literally, like, screaming out of the top of my lungs, like, it would be crazy, like, oh my goodness, like, how they did not take each other out, I'll never know, because they were literally so close to doing so, and they actually allowed one of the Fords to overtake uh, the Air Force, one of the uh, their cars, as they were battling so hard, so you know, <laughs> it, it was it was that it was that crazy indeed. But thankfully, the team they did enforce the um, the team orders, of course, because I think if they would have carried on, it would have probably just got really really ugly after that. So. Um, yeah, thankfully they did that, but it was still good though, nonetheless. Moving forward into LMP2, and that was a really good race. I enjoyed that actually with LMP2 as well too. Um, we had um, Bruno Senna in that Rebellion car overtaking the G-Drive 26 of uh, Rune and Rusinov to take the lead. Um, a fantastic move going into the bus stop. And that's a slingshot out and make that move, of course, which was um, really good. Um, we also had a bit of dramas with uh, the Rebellion, I'm not sure if it was the same one or not, but um, they had a bit of problems, particularly with their Antonio, of course. So as a result, um, the Jackie Chan cars, they managed to get up to third place, which was really good with them. And then, yeah, in the end, it was um, the uh, 26 G-Drive, which uh, lost the lead, but they managed to get it back again. I don't know how, but yeah, they managed to get it back again. Uh, they won in the LMP2. Excuse me, they won in LMP2 um, quite um, comfortably, to be honest, um, after, like I said, inheriting the lead, of course. So, yeah, fantastic job by G-Drive. I think it's their second win. I'm not sure, but comment below if you know, if it isn't, then just, if, if it isn't, then just, like, literally comment below, you know, who got the first one, whatever, because I literally don't know, so, um, yeah, I think it's their second win. If it is, great job. If it's not, still a good job as well. Still a team, loved them, and yeah, like I said, still a great job. ATM. There was an incident involved with um, the Porsche, uh, firstly. It was uh, coming out of the bus stop chicane. Pretty much he clipped, uh, it was on the golf cars, he pretty much clipped one at the back of the Ford, and uh, that turned him around, of course, and pretty much I think he retired after that, so 
unlucky for him, of course. But then afterwards, it would just pretty much be lackluster. So in the end, it would pretty much be Pedro Lamy, who started from pole position, would then go on to take the win, of course. Fantastic drive of, of him, of course. Um, absolute legend, Pedro Lamy. You know, racing Formula One, um, of course. You may remember in that Senna movie, of course. So um, yeah, living legend, and uh, yeah, the fact that he takes another win uh, in the uh, FIA World Endurance Championship for Aston Martin, of course, is awesome indeed. And now we move on to the Premier Class LMP1, and my God, that was something. Firstly, you had um, the two Toyotas. Um, they swapped positions uh, after the start, of course. Um, so I think it was the seventh, the eighth. The eight if I'm not mistaken, something like that. And then both of them just pretty much destroyed the Porsches and dropped them, hit that Porsche down to third. Then after that, Tom Fallery went down. We also had uh, a couple of incidents. Uh, firstly, it was the Porsche that ran into the Alpine. I think it was the number two that ran into the Alpine, of course. So uh, massive um, disappointments go out to the Alpine, of course. Um, innocent party in that accident, um, the Porsche. I'm surprised he didn't get a penalty for that, for causing a collision. Um, he might have done, but I don't know, we'll have to see. But um, yeah, that happened, which was such a shame. And then we had also um, the, the altercations with uh, the Golf Racing running into the back of the Ford and then the Toyota uh, alongside trying to miss it, of course. Uh, thank God he didn't run into it as well, good God. I think it might have been the leader. So if that was the case, oh Jesus, that would have been that would have been a huge disaster indeed. And yeah, pretty much after that, um, we had this amazing battle between Porsche and Toyota at the very latter part of the stage of the race, where the temperatures went down, and uh, usually when the temperatures go down, the Porsches, that's when the Porsches are at their prime, and uh, they showed it, you know, they went past the uh, number seven, I believe it was, and then afterwards was on the attack of the number uh, eight, of course, but then I think afterwards I would have to, um, make a pit stop which would then drop them way down you know right out of contention for that win so pretty much in the end it was a Toyota 1-2 or so we thought because that uh, because we know it was going to be a port of Toyota 1-2 now it was going to be the question of which Toyota was going to get in front of uh, which and during those last 15 minutes it was crazy it was absolutely insane it was absolutely intense I flipping enjoyed it you know the 8 the 7 trying to get close to the 8 and you know that constant pressure you know it, it was so good but in the end it was the number eight toyota who managed to overhaul the number seven toyota behind um it would be sebastian buemi uh our own sky f1's anthony davidson oi oi anthony uh and kazuki nakajima of course the guy from f1 who you may remember of course um so yeah a fantastic drive mm -hmm. indeed controlled the race and really, you know, kept their head, particularly with Sebastian Buemi, kept his head uh, in that last couple of laps, you know, trying to fend off uh, Kamui Kobayashi behind, who was really hot on his heels. So, um, yeah, just absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, congrats to Toyota as well. One, two as well. That's awesome. Um, really, really awesome. Porsche in third, of course, and I think, and the Toyota in fourth, correct me if I'm wrong. But something like that. So, yeah, really, really awesome. Um, really good result and a really good race, actually. I really enjoyed that, actually. Um, as my sort of first world, proper like world endurance championship race that I've ever watched. Like, normally I'll just like watch like an hour or two and then that'll be it. But for me, you know, watching the whole thing, you know, it was, it was good. I'm not gonna lie, it was really, really good. I enjoyed it. It was fun, it was interesting. And uh, yeah, definitely gonna watch more of it. I'm definitely gonna watch Le Mans 24 hours, uh, which is gonna be like the highlight, you know, the main thing of this year pretty much in motorsport. And then obviously we've got races like Nürburgring, Kota, um, we have Mexico, so many other races coming up. So it's really gonna be awesome. And I'm totally looking forward to watching, you know, everything that goes on in Le Mans, of course, because it's gonna be awesome. It really will be an insane season. As for my rating, of course, I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. Now, the reason why I've given this a seven out of 10 is the fact that it had good racing, particularly in pro. I really enjoyed that pro battle between Ford and Ferrari. That was really good. 
You also had the battle between Toyota and Porsche, right? And particularly with Toyota at the end, you know, them two battling it hard at the end. That was pretty cool. Um, but why it dropped a little bit was the fact that it was kind of lackluster, particularly with the AM class. There wasn't a lot of action going on with the AM class indeed so um that's kind of the reason why that's the case indeed but nonetheless still you know a good a good race you know thoroughly enjoyed it and um yeah excited for what's to come in uh the world endurance championship of course particularly with the uh, battle with Porsche and Toyota so uh yeah that is it for today I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to hit the like button down below subscribe if you're new and comment below on what your thoughts about the race did you enjoy it was it fun was it awesome tell me if you watched the whole entire race I'd love to know and uh yeah that is about it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video um it's your boy Jumper boy take it easy I am out peace